So guys, before we get started, don't forget we do have that amazing discount code, thanks to Tier Zero Games, going on right now. And all you have to do is put in ZW Games five to get five percent discount on your total order at tier zero games.com the links will be in the description below what's it youtube dow here from zephyr war games bringing you as i pulled the other day a blue eyes white dragon beat down deck that's right, so this is all designed to be a balanced go first and go second deck. It's also then designed to OTK your opponent or set up a couple of decent negates, all without utilizing Hay Firebrax combos, um, danger combos, and it does not have Blue Eyes Chaos Max in here because I want to focus around this beautiful boy right here, and that is Blue Eyes White Dragon. Before we get started, please smash the like button, hit the notification bell, and subscribe so you do not miss out on anything. Before we get started, massive shout out to Carl for helping me put this build together as well. Now, just as we take in the beauty of the manga mat, I'm going to zoom in to Blue Eyes and move the mat over a little bit so you can see that beautiful Blue Eyes face. Uh, and we're going to start off with the profile, as you do in any Blue Eyes deck, with Triple Blue Eyes White Dragon. Now, of course, this, in my opinion, is the best artistic um, version of the Blue Eyes. I absolutely love the one where it's standing on the clock tower, and you can't beat the OG art. However, just the way that this card looks like it's been drawn or pastelled on is absolutely stunning. So I do advise, if you can get any other Blue Eyes art, this is the one to go for. If not, stick with the OG art. Beautiful, as always. Uh, we've then got the triple blue eyes alternate. Yes, I finally have these as a secret as well. Now, I've tried to keep this deck as budget as possible. I will explain as we go through that if you are not restricted by any budget restrictions, what you can put in in certain places instead to add a little bit more power to the deck. However, this deck can do really, really well, like I said, going first and second. And if you want to focus on a particular outcome, you can adapt it accordingly to do so. Now these are about 13 quid each, whereas Ultras and Golds have dropped down to about 10 to 8 quid each depending on where you get them from, which was probably used to be the most expensive card floating between 15 to 20 quid, it's now a lot easier to get. We then play the One Dragon Spirit of White. Uh, a lot of people cut this card out, but I really, really like the fact that it banishes back row, um, which in this current meta is really, really important, uh, and it can tag itself out into a Blue Eyes, which a lot of people actually forget as well. We then, for the level 1 tuners, play the one White Stone of Ancients, the one Sage of Eyes of Blue, and the one uh, White Stone of Legend. Now, in my opinion, White Stone Legend is better because it gets you that card back once this has been discarded or sent from the field or just sent to the graveyard. Um, it gets you that card added back, so it gives you that advantage. Whereas Ancient Stone is a little bit slower because it goes off in the end phase. Um, it's less relevant against certain builds. Like The game has kind of evolved and picked up pace uh, a lot more. Um, which is why this can kind of suffer. Sage of Isa Blue, in my opinion, is probably the most important one for the rank 8 spam, which is why I might even consider dropping the Ancients and bumping up the Sage of Isa Blue, purely because Sage can turn any card that you have or any effect monster you have into a Blue Eyes monster from the deck. So the best kind of combination with him is going against King of D. Now, some people don't like King of D, I completely understand, because he does require you to discard a spell, and then if it gets ashed, you've already negged a card as well. But, the reason I'm playing him is, number one, he is the main normal summon of the deck. I don't really, you're not going to normal summon your blue eyes um, using two tributes, you're not really going to want to normal summon your level ones, uh, unless you absolutely have to, and the only one you want to normal summon would be Sage, just to give you a search for effect failure. However, King of D can get you into Melody of Awakening Dragon, which, depending on what spell you've put to the grave, can help you combo up higher, because it can then get you into Melody. Melody can then discard any dragon, search you out two, which can be your Levenir, because you've set up your graveyard and your board, or, of course, it can be the Blue Eyes and Alternate combo as well. You then drop Sage to turn him into a Blue Eyes. You're enhancing your rank 8 play. So then by enhancing your rank 8 plays, what that allows you to do is that actually allows you to kind of move into the OTK XYZ play and of course the defensive XYZ play as well. Um, now we just move on to the standard dragon beatdowns that help move this deck along a little bit as well. Is we've got double Nebula Dragon, shout out Carl. Um, so this card's actually really good, it came out in Chaos Impact. You revealed this card and one other level 8 dragon monster in your hand and then special summon both in defense position but their effects are negated. So, especially on a blue eyes, who really cares about negating his effect? Um, 
You can't normal or special armor monsters for the rest of this turn except light or dark dragon monsters. You can banish this card from the graveyard, target level 4 light or dark dragon monster um, in your graveyard and it's your hand. Now you're not going to worry about that effect, you can only use this effect once per turn. It's the fact that he is a free on his own uh, with him and another level 8 dragon is a rank 8. So that is your OTK play or your defensive play just there. Now obviously the downside is you do technically lose 2 cards from your hand, so you're going to be playing with 3 cards. But you can combo him off with um, other engines as well to kind of help get you into your rank 8 OTKs, rank 8 defensive plays and then back him up as well. As long as you do all your other plays before him, you'll be absolutely fine to go. For the other dragons to support this cast, we do have the one Levineer and the one Galactic Spiral Dragon. Now, Levianir, um, the reason you play it at 1 is because he is searchable from Melody of Awakening Dragon, being 3k or more attack and 25 or less defense. Uh, on top of that, you need to be able to set up your graveyard. Now, because you play a lot of light dragons, the chances are, or more consistently, you're going to get his um, effect to revive a card from the graveyard more often than not. So that's going to allow you to pretty much make a rank 8 play on its own later game if you top deck him, or early game if you search him out specifically. He also has a very good defensive play that, again, if you imagine comboing off the King of D with the Sage Advisor Blue, you've got a Blue Eyes on board, you've got a Light and Dark in the graveyard, you just need one more in the graveyard, make Levy in here, and you're ripping one from your opponent's hand. So that's, again, very, very important as well. Uh, sorry, two cards from your opponent's hand. The Galactic Spiral Dragon is if you control two or more Light and or Dark Dragon Monsters, you get to special summon him from the graveyard if he was there in the first place. Now, again, he's a level 8 Dark Dragon. This can help you extend your plays. This can help get you into your rank 8 plays, which is what we want to do. Now, if you're not going to go into your rank 8 plays, you're still going to be facing your opponent down with a 2500 beater of a dragon monster, plus 2k beater and a 3k beater as well. So on their own, they're still 500 short of giving you actual game as well. Um, so very, very good and very, very powerful cards. We then play Galaxy Soldier Engine. Now, I see a lot of people play this at 2. Um, the reason I've put this in here is because this is actually really good for a defensive and offensive option. So, of course, the outcome is all the same. It's always going to go Nova and Infinity. However, you can make Nova and Infinity within your first four summons. That means you can't be Nibiru if you want to go higher. It also, just by discarding the card, makes you bait out one of your opponent's effects because the second that they let this go through and resolve, you're going to be ending up in Infinity. If that happens, you then get to steal one of your opponent's monsters that has been lazily left in attack mode or um, has been put into attack mode to deal damage with you, you've survived the attack, and then you get to go Infinity. Infinity is going to steal that card as well, make my Infinity a 29 base, and I'm going to have the ability to negate any effects that tries to stop me going into my rank 8 OTK plays. If you combo off Infinity on the ball with your rank 8 OTK plays, your one card turns from a 9k beater into a 1500 beater, which is absolutely crazy. Then to support with hand traps, we've got Triple Ghost Ogre. Um, I think this is probably one of the most underrated hand traps in the game right now. Now the reason I say that is a lot of players are prepared for their Halley Firebrax and Aurora Dons to be impermed or Valid. Now, they then adapt to that. They then go, right, okay, if this gets negated, I've got an extension from my hand to move my place further forward. I can then use my... Um, and I can then use my other cards, my Aurora Dom can use his effect. I can then use my other cards to link climb with my Halley Firebrax to get into my Aurora Dom. Whereas when a Ghost Ogre gets dropped, you're basically saying, that's fine, you can have your Despot 001 from deck, you can have your uh, O Lion from deck, but I'm going to take away your Link 2 materials. I'm going to take away your Link 3 of Aurora Dom, which then used to, needs to use its effect to pop two cards anyway. So you let them have the tokens and pop it. All they're then going to be left with is three level 3 monsters plus a Despot 001. So they can't actually synchro into anything nice from there. The other thing that makes it even more hurtful is if they do play the um, Link Cross play, you can then also stop them. All they can do is go into one rank 8 synchro or level 8 synchro um, just because you've used Ghost Ogre that not a lot of people are prepared for or ready to face. I'm not saying it's the best hand trap, I'm saying it's the most underrated hand trap that actually because it's a light attribute can help this deck out as well. I just feel that it's a very very good card that if played correctly and dropped on your opponent alongside the, the surprise factor of blue eyes, dropping a ghost ogre is going to make your opponent go, okay that was new, that was different, how am I supposed to adapt my plays from here? I mean straight away take out the Halley Frybrax they then have to exhort more resources to get into a Link 2 machine monster in order to then go into Aurora Dawn. 
I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's certainly a lot harder under Ogre than it is under Vela and Imperm sometimes. Uh, speaking of Vela, we do play two of her. You can easily bump her up to three if you wish, and she is searchable off of Sage with Eyes of Blue as well. The last monster we play is the Arome, uh, Arof, well, Amorphage Goliath. Purely because if you want to be hardcore defensive, you go with a Morphage Goliath. This will then shut your opponent down from special summoning from the extra deck. And you, of course, but hopefully by that point you should have built up your board enough that this is, isn't going to be a big issue. Also, if you do brick onto him, he is a level 8 dragon that can be sent to the graveyard with trading. And on top of that, you do play Return of the Dragon Lords that can bring him back. So you can bring back a 2750 beta that is going to lock your opponent out completely and it's going to cause your opponent a lot of issues to try and get past Goliath. One thing you also need to remember is if this does come off the Heavenly Spheres, as long as you've got, which 9 to 10 because you're going for the defensive play, you will, um, your Hope Harbinger, Dragon Titanic. A lot of people forget that Hope Harbinger can actually redirect materials or redirect attacks to itself. So with this sitting in defense, your opponent might go, okay, cool. Um, I'm guessing I'm going to have to just get a normal monster or a monster on board that's less that can just uh, swing over it. And you go, okay, Hope Harbinger, redirect, and you're going to take damage. Plus, you're going to be locked out. I'm then going to be able to attack you next turn as well. Very, very good. Very, very powerful. I mean, just think of it this way. Your opponent normal summons a monster. You chain Heavenly Spheres. Bounce that monster, tribute off Heavenly Spheres. That will then let you special summon Goliath from the deck. Your opponent then has to try and special summon from their hand, deck, or graveyard to then try and beat over Goliath. If you then have... Hope Harbinger on the board, which can negate any spell that tries to do that type of revival, you're sorted in that route. If they then try to get another monster on board, special summon from hand, which we all know isn't going to be massively beat. I mean, look at Block Dragon. If they somehow get Block Dragon and they bring that on board and go, right, okay, I better get rid of Goliath before I can do my plays, you go, okay, fine. They do that, they attack, you've used Hope Harbinger, redirect, Block Dragon gets destroyed, they get their free materials in hand, but they're not going to be able to special summon them because they bring out. Um, Gigantis and then they try and bring out Seeker and then try and excavate that's fine they're all, all they're doing is going to wall up so a Goliath is an incredible stop card if you want to be more aggressive you can go for the level 6 Dark Dragon that banishes when it's special summoned um, but using that one it is a level 6 it is a Dark so it doesn't actually help extend the plays a little bit more what makes Goliath better is it is a level 8 moving on to the spells we play Triple Return of the Dragon Lords it can probably be cut to 2 if you wish um, but the reason I'm playing this at free is because it lets you revive, it's a monster reborn with additional protection. So if your opponent tries to clear your board off, you go, okay, return, banish, protect. Um, if your opponent clears the board off and you go, right, I'm just going to extend for my rank 8 plays anyway, activate a return of Dragon Lords, bring, bring back a blue eyes, bring back any card you've discarded as additional fodder, and then use it as instant XYZ material as well. It's basically monster reborn for this deck particularly with a little bit of extra. We've then got Triple Melody of Awakening Dragon. Now, of course, like I said, this is quite important in the deck. The only downside is the discard fodder of it, which is why when you put a Danger Engine in this deck, once you're focused on going second, that discard, even if it is discarded as cost and then your opponent ashes this, does not mean you're losing two cards because that danger could then turn into either a pop a face up, pop a back row, special summon a level eight from the deck, special summon itself, or of course, search out another Danger Monster to help try and move your plays further forward. The Danger Engine, in my opinion, is very, very good, but I think it's better for focusing going second. This build, as I specifically mentioned at the start, is to be A, budget, and B, be able to balance between going first and going second. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to show you, is the offensive and defensive capabilities, all in one nice and neat 40 card Blue Eyes deck. For the draw cards, we do play Double Pot of Desires, and we do play Triple Trading. Now, you could consider extravagance, but I just feel that trading is actually a lot better for this deck, especially when you're putting stuff like the Spiral um, Galactic Dragon in the graveyard, because you're not actually losing anything. He wants to be in the graveyard, you're drawing two cards. If you're then putting cards to fuel your Levineer plays, if you're putting Blue Eyes in there um, to be revived off the Return of the Dragon Lords, you're actually adding a bit more consistency to your deck that route. Desires, because we play a lot of free ofs, is actually a very, very good draw card for this deck because it can, as long as it banishes the cards that are no longer necessary, like your third Galaxy Soldier after he's been used, or um, any of your other cards that become dead later on in the game, uh, this can actually be very, very helpful to extend. Like I said, the balance between this deck is to either use um, Infinity for defense or offense, and then use one rank eight XYZ monster in your extra deck to do that exact same job. So you minimize all your re requirements on other cards outside of those um, and gives you a bit more variety to play around with as well. 
Finish off on the one-off spells, we've got the one one for one, the one monster reborn, and the one foolish burial. Obviously, monster reborn gets you anything back. The one for one is to get any of your level one tuners to the board to use your synchro plays, or of course, if you need to get that search of blue eyes off as well, and can help put you some uh, bricky monsters in your graveyard, again, setting up levin air plays. Foolish burial, of course, send any of the stones and send the galactic dragon. That is your main targets for that as well. Now, moving on to the extra deck. Um, so we'll start off with the Link Monsters because we only play three. So we play the Heretic Seals of Heavenly Spheres. We also play one Selene Queen of Master Magicians. And, well, I'll explain this first before I show the last one. So the reason we've chosen Selene, or the reason I've chosen Selene, is because it's an incredibly powerful card. It only requires a spellcaster, so it needs three monsters, and one of them must be a spellcaster. That could be your Sage Advisor Blue or your Effect Veiler. Now, I know it's quite specific, but because you play a lot of spell cards, being able to bring that spellcaster back can actually help you get into your Link 4 very, very easily. And the Link 4 is an absolute boss that is on a budget in this deck. If you were unhindered by any budget restrictions and you wanted to put IP Mascarina in here or Access Code Talker or anything like that, then I'll change this ratio around, put some nightmares in here to help you climb and make Access Code even more powerful. That being said, the Link 4 we do use is an absolute beast in the form of Topologic Zero Boros. Now the reason we've gone with this guy right here is because we're using Desires, we're using Levinir. If you wanted to chuck a Gizmo Karochi, it is a level 8 dark, you could do. But the idea is that on a budget, being able to drop a Topologic Zero Boros on your opponent can then be triggered to um, clear your opponent's board is also an option. But you desire straight away, this is a 5k monster that can be made with two effect monsters. So that can be made with Selene and the card it brings back, or it can just be built up into in any uh, way, shape or form you wish. So let's say you use Cyber Dragon, uh, not Cyber Dragon, sorry, your Galaxy Soldiers, um, but you choose not to go into your Infinity and you want to be out and out aggressive, you've already activated Desires, you're going to go straight into Zero Boros uh, and you're going to clear your opponent's board off and then do some more damage as well. It's just a very, very budget rank uh, Link 4 monster and I think it personally, if your deck banishes, it's one of the best Link 4s you can play, especially on a tight budget. Uh, now for the Synchros, so for the Synchros again, the only one you're actually ever going to hard make is your Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon. Now when you make this, he then opens up the options for your Azure Eyes as defensive recurrence plays, Michael as your offensive banish plays, and Moonlight for your defensive bounce plays. So he pretty much covers all of the options. Now these can be taken out, adapted, the whole engine can be taken out if you wish. The, way, the reason I like Spirit so much is because it is a 3k defender, it has the ability to tag out into Azure Eyes, Azure Eyes can then protect the rest of your Blue Eyes and start bringing back your Vanillas. It gives you the effect of Blue uh, Black Rose, which is kind of like an IP into a Unicorn without actually having to use the discard fodder and splash out on an IP Mascarina as well. Uh, you've then got the Mark, Michael the Arch Light Swan, that the idea is if you wanted to, you could put Crystal Wing, but you're going to be making these and then using them as Link Fodder. So then Michael comes out, allows you to banish a card for a thousand life points, which is pretty much minimal depending on what that card is, um, and then allows you to kind of push your plays further forward that way as well. I only play the one Fusion Monster because I'm not focusing on the Fusion Engine within this deck, uh, and that is Blue Eyes Twin Burst. What I really like about Twin Burst is you don't need to use Poly. It can attack twice, and it can't be destroyed by battle. And on top of that, if it attacks something that can't be destroyed by battle itself or um, is stronger than it, because you'll take a little bit of damage, it will then trigger its effect to banish that card as well. So if, 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 really weird example, but if you were to um, attack something that's 4k, for example, you take a thousand damage, you then get to go triple burst second effect in damage step to banish. Uh, and then that will allow you to get rid of that and attack again as well. So it's very, very good to kind of clear boards and it can be a bit of a, a, a light tower that your opponent A doesn't know what to do with and B can really, really struggle to get past it. We'll then move on to the XYZs uh, and we'll start off with, of course, the Cyber Dragon Nova into Infinity plays. Um, this is the defensive plays. So this gets you within your first four summons, so you're not going to get Nibiru or you have a way to stop Nibiru. Uh, defensively, if you back this up with the um, Dragula Bond, that then gives you two forms of technical Omni Negates, but a Spell and Trap Negate with Hope Harbinger and then an Omni Negate with Infinity. Uh, and again, it's a very minor engine that's incredibly cheap to put together now. Um, and in my opinion, it's so worth playing in this deck. 
um, just because it, it gives you so much more versatility as well. Um, I'm going to try and leave the, the engine for last, so I'll show you that last because it's probably the best engine around. Uh, Ding, because it's a generic rank 8 that can send on summon, which you will be doing in this deck, and then protect all your other stuff from destruction. Uh, Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, because if you don't want to go with the Hope Harbinger play, you can actually go with this. Now, obviously, the Hope Harbinger comes off of a second card, whereas this would need to be hard casted, uh, but it just allows you to negate monster effects. And then the best engine for a Blue Eyes XYZ deck is the Dragular Bond. And Dragular Bond lets you get into your defensive option of number 38 Hope Harbinger and your insane offensive option of the Numeron Dragon. So, the way Dragular Bond used to work in MR4, well, it didn't really work in MR4 because you needed two Link Zones. Now that we're no longer restricted by Link Zones, Dragular Bond is free. Here's a generic rank 8. You make him, you detach, your opponent cannot target it with card effects. Nice, you cannot imperm or veil on my blooming Dragulabon. Leave me alone. You then get to turn Dragulabon, detach material, take two number monsters with different names, two dragon number ones uh, monsters to be specific, with different names. You attach one as a material and special summon the other. So, just by going, okay, Dragular Bond, reveal Numeron and Hope Harbinger, use Hope Harbinger as a material for the Dragular Bond. Numeron Dragon gains a thousand attack for the combined ranks of all XYZs on the field. So just including yourself, you would already have a Dragular Bond and itself. It goes up to 9,000. You then couple that with um, the Infinity plays that you've made just beforehand to stop you getting the Beerus, to stop you getting Ash, to stop you getting Veiled, to stop you getting Impermal on your Dragular Bond. This is going to be a 15,000 attack monster. If your opponent has any monster in attack mode, they are gonna die. You are gonna win that duel straight outright. If you're going first and you want to be more defensive, you do it the other way around. Obviously, when doing so, you have to be more specific. So I would actually probably go for a hard summon of Photon Lord if I already have Infinity or Titanic Galaxy if I'm going for the Spheres play. Because like I mentioned earlier, you want to protect your Spheres in order to get the most out of your um, Goliath that will be summoned from deck. And that is it. That is it for the budget Blue Eyes White Dragon deck that is incredibly powerful and very, very competitive as well. Now the reason it's so competitive is because it has, as I've just shown you, a very simple rank 8 engine that can get into an incredibly powerful OTK within 4 summons. It also has an incredibly powerful defensive play backed up with Cyber Dragon Infinity as well. It gives you a lot to play around with, a lot to kind of do. And it has a lot of surprises that will catch your opponent off guard, making it a great deck to kind of do a bit of damage. Let's not forget, Blue Eyes did win Worlds once, and it is the deck of Kaiba. So, I hope you like this. I hope this helps. I hope this is giving you a couple of ideas for your own Blue Eyes deck. Like I said, I tried to keep this budget. If I wasn't under budget restrictions, I would probably put in an IP Mascarina, maybe a Nightmare Unicorn, alongside um, a Phoenix and an access code talker to use and abuse that engine. If I wanted to use and abuse the Halley Frybrax and the Jet combos, you can put that in there as well. I'd also advise putting Dangers in if you're set on going second first, and then side them out to be more defensive going second, which is when you'd probably go, okay, I'm gonna go second, I'm gonna OTK you with my Dangers, and then gonna take out some of the Dangers to put in my go first cards like Galaxy Soldier and be defensive that route as well. So you've got a lot of versatility. I've tried to make this deck balanced, um, which I think has done very, very well. Uh, and then we can kind of move it that way. But for now, please smash that like button, hit the notification bell, subscribe, so you do not miss out on anything. With that said and done, as always, guys, happy dueling.